show. Uh, Rick Sadler from Hit and Run Candlesticks. He's going to be talking about the Forex market here today. Uh, the topic of his, subject of his topic today is going to be how not to catch a falling knife and profit. So I'm going to go ahead right now. I'm going to get off here. Go ahead. Take it away, Rick. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I, I apologize. I, I was... Uh... I had planned to do something on the rounded bottom breakout, which is uh, we can certainly work with that. You know how to catch a falling knife with profits, but uh, uh, yeah, I actually, we'll get it done today. Yeah, yeah. actually, Rick, that, that's what I had down. If you want to discuss something else, that's fine as well. Whatever you feel okay, well, you great, want to present. Cool. We're good. We're good. Okay. Hey, okay. I want to say thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Thanks for allowing me to be here. It's a, it's truly an honor to be invited to one of these. Uh, it just totally makes my day. And uh, I appreciate everybody here that's that's taking their time uh, being here. Thank you guys for putting this on. Um, this, this is uh, just to introduce myself. My name is Rick Sadler. This is our website, real quick. Uh, uh, you know, I just want to point out that trading is very, very risky. We want to make sure that we trade with uh, money that we're comfortable with trading with. We always want to make sure that we. Um, have an understanding of what we what what kind of money we have at risk and realize that it's important to use uh, some protection like stops and uh, <clears throat> and uh, my <clears throat> excuse me my way of, of thinking about trading is never trade with so much money that you know you have to uh, bet the farm on it it's it's trading is not a lottery ticket uh, it, it's it it's a it takes time. <clears throat> it's something that you have to work at uh, to to make it down the road, and it pays off well if you go through the proper education. But you really, you know, be careful with what you trade with. Uh, it's so important. <clears throat> I want to shout out a special thanks to TC2000 and Warden Brothers. All the charts that you may see today will be based off their charts. Okay. One of the things, or the thing I want to talk about, which it, it ties right in how to not catch a falling knife. And, you know, so many people, they try to, uh, in trading, they try to catch the bottom. They try to pick that absolute bottom. And that that is, more times than not, that is a losing game. And I, I could stack people up a mile high that have tried to do that, and they just can't make it in trading. And that's because they're trying to pick the bottom rather than let the bottom form and then trade above that formation, which the money to be made up there is truly so much more easier to make. And that's kind of where we're where I'm headed to today with uh, uh, this this strategy and this particular chart pattern. One of the main things that we want to look for in this chart pattern is how. Uh, the bottom forms and you know when you have a, a bearish chart it's heading down like this and then as it starts you know starts in that curve and we'll just make it green here it starts curving around making this bottom kind of a, 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 a u-shaped bottom is what you're looking at or a or a cup you know that's how a lot of the cups and the handles are um, are created uh, this way coming out of the bottom. In fact, what we'll be looking at really looks a lot like a cup and a handle. Um, it, it, you'll see it more as we go on. We can also be forming some nice bullish W patterns as well as inverted head and shoulders. And that can all be made inside here. You know, price action candlesticks, they, they might move around like this, but the overall pattern starts moving up. Um, and as we look at these, uh, th this is what it will look like. Here's our rounded bottom, and here's what the candlesticks may look like. Even though they're they're kind of jagged, what we want to try to do is round it up. We want to we want to visualize this. And one of the things we we look for in this is not so much the candlesticks, the price action, as much as the twenty day simple moving average and we'll look at that in a little bit and I'll show you what that would look like. But once price starts moving up and we start making that breakout into this, we call this a rounded bottom breakout and rather than try to pick uh, these bottoms down here, really 
I, I don't even necessarily go after this. Now that we we have a trade pattern that that works this way, but uh, right now today we're talking about the rounded bottom breakout. So what we're going to be looking for is as the trade moves up and it moves over a certain breakout area, then we're going to look to trade above that breakout area, and we're going to look for things like uh, what we call PBOs, which stands for pullback opportunities. Flags, pennants, triangles, wedges, J-hook breaks out, J-hook breakouts. Uh, these are just some common things that we might look out, look for, for tradable, prop, uh, tradable, tradable patterns. Like, you know, here's a little wedge right in here. Here's a nice little, you know, here's a big old pullback, and and uh, uh, we, you know, might look at this as as there's your there's your bullish J-hook pattern right there, uh, and we're looking for that breakout. All of a sudden, we just drew a cup and handle, didn't we? we? We have that cup and handle in there. So you'll see that type of chart pattern a lot. <clears throat> what I have found very, when I coach people and um, I teach people to work with the rounded bottom breakout, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take price action off the table because price action can really mess with our heads. You know, we see these, these bearish candles, these bullish candles, and they start messing around with with what the trend is actually doing and we start you know worrying about well hey there's a bull a bearish candle maybe I better not get into that trade when that bearish candle really is just pointing to opportunity at that point and we have some rules that go with this this happens to be rule number five or uh, number five in the setup I guess is what it's what we should call it and the green line that's the 20-day simple moving average. So what we want to look at there is notice how it it's moving down, and now look how it flattens out right there. Um, here's another thing. How about this? You see how the 20-day and compare it to the, this is the 50-day simple moving average. Compare it to the 50. See how we move down, and then look how it comes up like that. I call that like a little guppy, like a little guppy fish, the belly of the guppy. When we start doing that, and then it starts flattening out, this is where I want to start getting interested in looking for the trade. And now what we're looking for is a breakout above the 50-day moving average. That's what we're looking for. And then we're going to look to trade, enter that trade, in this area over here. Maybe the first day certainly doesn't have to be. Uh, more times than not, I look for the first day, but then I actually trade the second day. So I'm looking for the trade the second day to uh, show me an inside day. I want to buy on that inside day. Whether or not it breaks out that day or not doesn't matter. Uh, the big thing is I don't want it to break below my stop area down here. So even the next day, if I bought it here, I might be in it on this day. And then, you know, I'm waiting for it to move up like this. And if you just follow that 20-day simple moving average, there you go. Look at the kind of money that could have been made right in there. The black line, by the way, that's the 8 exponential moving average. We call that the T line. T line. Um, this is what the chart may look like. This is that same chart we were just looking at, but we, we've added some candlesticks on there. So you can see how... Um, We've, we've went above the 50-day simple moving average, but notice they didn't close. That If they don't close above the 50, it's not a rounded bottom breakout. Uh, we certainly have that 20-day 20 20 simple moving average moving up and starting to get close and pinch to that 50-day simple moving average. But without the close, all we have is a continued downtrend. That's it. And... Uh, so all of a sudden here we get the close, so where the entry might be, where I would draw the buy box, uh, if, you're in, if you're involved with our trading, there may be some members here, people that's been in our trading room uh, and uh, know what I'm talking about here, but you, know, we, you might put the buy box on right here, and then right in there is where we want to be a buyer, and being a buyer there, you can see how you can your, your choice is I mean you can certainly trade it up back up back or you can stay with the trade as long as it stays a bullish trade 
and you can see here it stayed at T-line run all the way up until it closed back here. And we know that when price moves this far from the T-line, we know to take profits up here. It's a no-brainer. Pullbacks are so common that, that it's just a no-brainer to take those profits. So the chart pattern I'm showing you here, this is absolutely my personal favorite uh, chart pattern without question. <coughs> it is. It has uh, profited more, more profits more often than any chart pattern I have ever run across. And you know, many of our, our uh, members, the people that, the traders that use this chart pattern will say the same thing, that it is just, it's easy to find, it's easy to trade. The rules with it are very clear, um, and uh, it, it, it just, the, the trade itself, it helps you stay in the trade, and it helps you get out of the trade when you need to. Let's move some of these up here. Um, the target direction, this is important. Part of the trade is coming off the bottom, but rather than picking the bottom, because all you're doing is you're, you're chasing that falling knife, and you know, a falling knife will just cut your hands up, cut a finger off, things like that. You don't want that to happen. We need all our fingers. So rather than try to catch the bottom or even these areas in here, uh, because you don't know that this is going to move up, uh, nobody does. You might get a little, a little, little small percentage pop, but then game can be over so quick. So as price moves up, and this is we're still looking at the same chart. The 200-day simple moving average always has to be above because this is our target direction. Always the target direction. Um, the target doesn't always have to reach it. In fact, you know we we see charts all the time where there's you know, there's 80, 100 percent between the 50 and the and the or yeah the 50-day simple and the 200-day simple up here. And you know let's be realistic. Uh, that may be the 200 up there. And that may be the the target direction. But realistically, a swing trader is not going to buy it and then just stay in it. You know for that 100 percent. But that 20 percent moves. That's common, and yes, that happens, absolutely. Uh, you know, here's a case right here. Uh, but it happens a lot where you can get in uh, to these trades and live through these little pullbacks because these are just little profit-taking pullbacks. This is just a little consolidation. And then, then here's a case where it just blasted off and took off one day, and then you can see how it pulled back. So this is why we always take profits at that 200, sometimes even sooner. All depends on how price action and the candlesticks are acting as we approach this area here. So if you're looking for 10, 15, 20, I'll say 30% profits, uh, this is a terrific chart pattern. Uh, and right now, you know the market is is set up so that we're not, we're not and it, like, like any chart pattern, Chart, chart patterns don't, you know, one particular chart pattern doesn't always work in every market every single day because you, you have to have charts set up into that pattern. And right now, the current market, we're, we're not quite set up into it, but I do think we're set up to the point where if the market started to get a little bit bullish, even if it was just a relief rally, which that's all I'm really kind of looking at right now. But if it did start that relief rally, we get up into these, these type of setups where these trades, I think we are poised, just absolutely poised for the rounded bottom breakout to just, just bring home the bacon. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of a market push uh, to get us in that area. And it's close. It's very close right now. Just another view of what we might look at and a few things we might look at in this trade. Um, we're looking for a minimum. This is just one of the rules that we want on the trade. And we have scans to, to accommodate all this stuff. Um, but we want a minimum of 10% between the 50 and the 200. One reason is, is, you know, really the idea behind doing this is using uh, an oversold attitude, but but 
overselling the moving averages to each other. In other words, overselling the revision to the mean is what we're doing. So we're taking price, uh, price that's been in a downtrend, breaks out over the 50, which the 50-day simple moving average acts a, a lot like a, a trend line uh, in a stock that's trending down. And when we move over it, you'll find that it actually has broken out of that trend line. And then that what, that's what gives us the, the freedom to trade to the re revision to the mean on the, for the 200-day simple moving average. And with minimum of 10%, we're helping that little bit of oversold. I, I think it really needs to be more than that. But um, with 10%, it's worth our time to make the trade. Uh, to be quite honest, if I look at a chart and uh, I'm thinking about entering it, if there's only uh, 2, 3, 4, 5% profit potential, there's no reason for me to enter that trade. I don't want to do that. I'm not saying I won't take a 5% profit. I certainly will. But I want at least a 10% possibility that adds to better probabilities of even getting that 5%. So we want that minimum of 10% in there. We want price trending down. That's very important. We want, we, want, we want the price definitely trending down. So what we're looking for is the T-line below the 20-day simple and the 20-day simple below the 50-day uh, simple and the 50-day simple below the uh, 200 uh, simple moving average. This dotted line happens to be the 100 SMA. And we use this a lot as a profit target kind of a profit direction target area. Um, what we find a lot is that 100 simple, if you were to put a trend line across, say a trend line across, you'll find many times there'll be a resistance up in these areas. And this is where you might want to take some profits at maybe 50% of the trade or maybe all the trade um, if you have enough profit in it. And, uh, you can always buy it back, watch it, you know, wait till it consolidates, pulls back, and then hooks back up so we can go and attack that 200-day simple moving average. Um, and, you know, we're looking for that downtrend being confirmed with these particular moving averages right here. Uh, and then we want to see that 20-day simple moving average stalling. And uh, that's what I talked about here where, you know, that the 20 days starts moving down like this and then um, see how it starts to starts to turn up and then uh, we'll probably do that green and there we start turning up this is the, the the 20 day simple moving average is on a run well here it starts to stall it's starting to stop its fall and then it starts turning up and this is what we you might get ready for but again, we don't want to we don't want to be entering that trade until that price is over that 50-day simple moving average, because the fact of the matter is that really more times than not on a downtrend, unless we break out of that 50, you can draw trend lines and you'll see that we haven't broken out of that trend. But if we break out of the 50-day simple, more times than not we've broken out of that downtrend line, and that allows uh, more of that freedom. Uh, to move up. Uh, some things to look for. Uh, of course, price trending down confirmed with the moving average, the 20-day stalling, and the price over the 50-day simple moving average with the target, I should write in there, target direction, 200 SMA, just the way this is. And this is a typical chart pattern. That's just what you may see uh, on, on the charts. So. We rally up to the 20, we pull back, we're up, we pull back, we play around. The bulls are constructing a bottom. All of a sudden, it breaks out. We can draw that trend line. You can see that we've clearly broken out of the trend line. We closed over the 50. We're putting in a nice little flag, nice little flag pattern, and we start breaking out of that flag. We might want to come in here, and I can see clearly that there are uh, let's do this right here. You can see clearly that might be a stop. Works right with that 50-day simple moving average. I think I think that very clear. No question about that as being a stop. And that also shows good construction off the bottom, meaning 
don't try to catch that that bottom. You don't have to. If you had a chance to look at this trade here, uh, enter this trade from here up. Um, if that could, you know, if that could pay you 20, 30, 40 percent, uh, really, why would we have to risk uh, getting down into this area? There's just no no point in it uh, that I can think of. Uh, greed, maybe, you know, greed because you know we want that that very bottom uh, in there, and uh, we can turn 30 percent into 40 percent. But uh, uh, greed only goes. Uh, so far, and then it gets you in a little bit of trouble. So you really have to be careful, and that's what we've done here. We've created this this strategy to keep you off the bottom and trade above successful construction, a definite downtrend, successful construction by the bulls. Now we trade where we have a great revision to the mean, the 200-day symbol, a very common area for price to run back to. So uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, let's see here. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. Where'd my screen go? Hmm. Apologize. There we are. Here's another one. Whoop. Try this again. One more time. OK. Here's a trade that represents 35% from the 50-day simple moving average to the 200-day simple moving average. Um, remember to always take, take profits, and remember that there are failures to this chart pattern. There's no question about it. I'm actually going to start from this RBB failure right there. Um, you know, the, the, this is, this is a, a uh, rounded bottom breakout. We've been in a downtrend, the 20-day simple moving average has come up to that 50-day simple. Price rallied up, but it failed, and it broke down. Now, because it had a shooting star up here, I'm, I'm a big candle guy. I love candlesticks. I think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They tell you exactly what price is doing. And this little shooting star does not necessarily represent, oh, hey, that's going to be some big failure. However, it does represent we're, we're likely to see a lower low from that candle. And that's what happened. But the bulls couldn't carry it. In this case, it represented total failure. So this chart pattern does fail. That's why it's so important that if you enter the trade at this level here, where's your stop? Always ask yourself this question. Why am I buying this trade? Why do I like this trade? Well, in this particular, this particular strategy, we like this trade because it's closed up over the 50-day moving average after being in a big downtrend. And usually, there's always some sort of a bottom we can, we can find in here. Uh, it might be uh, higher lows or higher highs. It might be a candlestick construction. It might be something, double bottom, um, inverted, inverted head and shoulders, all kinds of things down in this area here. So, that's why we always want to put our stop right in there on the, on the early part of the game. You know, once it moves up here, then that's a little bit different. But for the early part of the game, we always want that stop just underneath that 50-day simple moving average. Certainly take in consideration what the other candlesticks are doing. And just, you just want to just tuck it in just underneath the 50. But like I said, you want to find out where support is and maybe just a slight touch below support. And then we want to look at what we call the buy box. Now, I like to buy this chart mostly on the next day or the day after the breakout. So we have the breakout here. Um, let me back up here. On a good market, when the market is really acting good, then I will certainly take that first day. I'll buy right there at the end of the day, hold it, and live with it for the next few days. But more times than not, what I'm looking for is that breakout. It makes my scans. It hits the scans that night. We put them on a watch list. We plan them for the next day. The next day rolls around. Before the market opens, what I want to do is look at my charts. And I want to put a buy box, what we call a buy box in there. Usually, I'll go a little bit higher than the high. Um, 
and go just slightly below the T-line. In fact, I'll go down to wherever my stop is. And I just want to buy it in that area. I already like the chart. I don't need to wait for a bullish candle. I just need it in this area right here. I've got my stop set, my risk usually fairly small, two, three, four percent maybe. For me personally, that's doable. So uh, I'll place that entry in there, and from there I will trade the chart based on on uh, candlestick signals, the T line, um, flags, pennants, wedges, things like that. Uh, all the way up or as far as I can get it as close to that 200-day simple moving average as possible. Uh, they certainly don't all, I don't want anyone to think that, hey, this is what we look for every single day and this is what happens every day. Look, I'm, look we all know that that's not true. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of common sense that goes into stock trading and this is where, you know, you've got to sit back and you've got to, you've, you've got to say, hey, this is a pretty good chart pattern that I'm telling you it is but I'm also telling you that not every chart looks like this not every chart is going to be a 35 percenter in the pocket um, yeah, like I say there's a little common sense here uh, there's no guarantees to stock trading there's high probability and there's educate yourself to that high probability to the high probability trades that's what makes uh, uh, winners that's what stacks the winners up Yes, you're going to have losers, uh, but the important thing is to keep those um, stops, uh, keep those stops in there, and keep the stops small. You know, making a plan is so important, and that's what we've done here. You know, I've made a plan with this this chart uh, pattern, this strategy. The plan is the breakout. The plan is the buy. I have a directional target. I'm not afraid to take targets halfway or a quarter of the way. I'm not afraid to take a 10% or 5% profit if, if, the, if the chart calls for it. Um, you know, th that 100-day simple moving average, we find many times stops or pauses the chart, ch the price. So maybe if you enter here, it might be only a 5, 6, 7% trade here. And if you, if you do get, uh, say, a sell signal in there, or you know, let's do it like this, sell signal, if you get that sell signal in there, then you might want to take those profits because what's likely to happen is a pullback, and then if the bulls can truly hold it up, they'll bring it back up again, and it'll give you another chance. Uh, the most in thing, one of the most important things about trading is to profit. That's why we're here. You know, if we wanted it, if we wanted to trade as a hobby, we'd just go buy model airplanes and and build them or fly them or or go fishing, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, we're here to trade, to supplement our income, help our retirement, buy a boat, a car, whatever you, whatever you're going to do. So it's always important to take those profits, and having that plan is so important. So, you know, you ask yourself, well, why do you, why do you like this trade? Uh, and once you answer why you like the trade. The answer, you've also answered why you wouldn't like that trade. So if I like the trade because it's up over the 50-day simple moving average, that's what the strategy calls for, and it was to close back, let's say it comes back and we close back below the 50, well, then we would not like that trade right there. That's pretty simple. Um, sometimes we... we um, we complicate trading uh, with all sorts of different indicators and, you know, this says this, this says that, and I'm reading this and I'm reading that, and we get a little confused on what to do. This is pretty simple. This is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> There's um, eight very easy phases uh, to the rounded bottom breakout. They, they really are easy. Um, the the uh, price we want the price trending down. That's that's easy to do. Uh, we want the mark or the the chart itself making lower highs and lower lows. We want a downtrend for this particular uh, chart pattern, and uh, we confirm that with the uh, moving averages. It's just an easy way to do it. Uh, I have found that the 
uh, 20-day simple, and the 50-day simple, and the 200 simple moving average, they are the best ones to use for that. Uh, those are my three main moving averages for this particular chart pattern. Once the chart pattern breaks out over 50, then that's where the T-line comes into play, and I use that a lot. But for the beginning part of it, the T-line has very little to do with it uh, because we're looking for price to come back up over the 50-day the simple moving average. We want that 20-day simple moving average or 20-day simple moving average to stall. Now, that's one of the most important things there. And what we're looking at is that that 20-day simple moving average to be moving down. And then what we want is for it to start stalling. Whoops, rough mouse there. To stall and flatten out, and we can even maybe see some stall up into this area. And then what we want to see is price start to, to start to turn up and move over. Uh, and price will move over before the 20-day simple will. So uh, many times uh, I'll be in the chart before the 20 is actually over the 50, many, many, many times. But price has moved over the 50 because price is what leads the moving averages. And price will, for the 20 to move up over the 50, price will have already been there. So. So that, that's where we look for those chart patterns that look like this. They might break out. And the reason I buy an inside day is because, whoops, wrong one. Try that again. Because what happens is now we get that, that candle pattern that pulls back. And that's still allowing that 20 to move up, even though we have a pullback inside the buy box. And I want to buy in that area. And it might stay there for a couple of days. In the meantime, that 20-day simple moving average is still climbing, even though this may be flat. As long as price is ahead of it, the 20 will close close that gap. And then, man, that really starts to look good in there. You see we've got a little flag, and it's very simple. Make money up that direction. So the stalling, that's very important with the 20-day simple moving average. We want to see price rising, of course. Price rising up through the 20. That's what's going to bring the 50 up headed to that 50-day simple moving average. And like I said, the, the T-line doesn't, doesn't have to, a lot to do with the very beginning part of it, but you want to see it following. And if the, if the price is moving up, the T-line is going to be following. Uh, T-line up through that 20-day simple moving average, especially if you start seeing a T-line run. When you start seeing a T-line run up through that 50, that's also a nice little warm and fuzzy feeling that the bulls are really marching up that direction, and that's what you want. Uh, the switch, or what I call the flip sometimes, is when price starts to move uh, higher, flipping up through all the moving averages. So uh, with, with, uh, with that price getting up through there, remember, what do we like about it? What we like is price moving up through those moving averages, and then we're looking for the PBO. The PBO is a pullback opportunity. And uh, that's where we see that, uh, let's see, we'll do price up through the moving averages. Then we're looking for the price to pull back because this is where we're going to look to buy the chart. In the very beginning stages, this would be as close to that 50-day simple moving average as possible. Now, as price moves up, what we're going to do is we're going to look for things uh, maybe like flags, um, wedges, things like that. Um, just, just typical uh, Western chart patterns that you know we all know, uh, everybody in the world knows. Uh, but that's the reason. The reason we know them. That's what. That's what we make as human beings. That's that's the design we make because we are buying price and selling price to create these these things. So as long as we know what to look for, then we know how to trade them. Uh, the breakout is when the pattern becomes the actual, we call it RBB for short, it's a rounded bottom breakout. Um, it's when the first candle breaks out over that 50-day simple moving average. If the candle comes back, uh, maybe the next candle, uh, the next day, if it closes back under the 50, uh, many times I'll look at that uh, as a trade and I'll take that trade, but I can't call it a rounded bottom breakout because it's not over that 50, but it might be another trade setup that you might like 
uh, you know, if the market looks good, if the chart looks good, uh, you might take it. But we can't, just, we just can't call that uh, the RBB. The point of me saying that right there is that this strategy has, uh, it's very rule-based. And I, I think most traders, in fact, I can't think of any traders that I've ever talked to that will dispute the fact if you have a plan, it's the best way to go. Your plan doesn't always work out. We know that. But you have to have a plan. Without a plan, you're just scatterbrained, and you're just slinging mud against a wall hoping something sticks. And this, this chart strategy has this plan built in it. It has these rules, and that, that helps you with that plan, helps you stay on track. So then what we're looking for, the moving average, well, we already did that one, uh, target. Uh, the target is always in the direction of the 200 SMA. So it's important to, when you're looking at a chart, the 200 SMA must be above the um, the moving, the main, the, the 50 day simple moving average because that's the target direction. What you want is you want the buyers to feel so good about the fact they've come out of a downtrend, out of a bottom, up through that 50 day simple moving average, making, and, and when it does that, uh, just by design, it creates a rounded bottom, just by design. And when you start breaking out of that 50, all of a sudden that 200 day simple moving average is up there, and now you have all the traders in the world, they're, you know, we're not the only ones looking at this chart. All of a sudden, everyone's thinking, hey, for a little longer term, maybe, maybe not what a, a short-term swing trader is looking for, but a little longer term, they're starting to look at that 200-day simple moving average, especially when there's 30, 40, 50 percent in there. Well, as a short-term swing trader, we take advantage of that and we take those little swings knowing there's going to be a little pullback here and there, but, but then we can get right back in that pullback and take that next swing up to that 200. As long as the overall uh, traders interested in this chart are still pushing this trade up. Believe me, I take profits along the way. Look, I, I have no problem with, uh, with uh, 5%. You know, I have no problem with 10%. Uh, we're here to be traders. We're not here to, to uh, as much as we would like to say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to enter trade unless I can make, you know, 100%. Well, good luck to that. You know, let, go ahead and call me up. Let me know how that's working out for you because th there's, that's just not likely. But these kind of numbers are very easy to do, very easy to do. And if you can, if you can pull these kind of numbers out and if you could average, say, 10, Say say seven to oh seven to twelve thirteen percent a month on your money. Um, you know that's pretty good money. That's excellent money. In fact, I think most traders would say, "Hey, I'll take that any day." And uh, this trade strategy can do that for you. <clears throat> Just a quick look here at uh, some of these charts that how they might look. Uh, here's a nice chart setup. We have a double bottom. We always want to look for those. Uh, patterns along the bottom to show construction. We've rallied up, and look at that pullback. What a sweet place that would be a buyer right here uh, on this chart. Great little targets to the upside, you know, using using typical uh, high low target resistance support things like that. Um, here's that that what is that the same chart? No, nope. here's a different chart, and you can see how it broke out. And you can see how it, although it pulled back, it created that flag, it's still holding that 50-day simple moving average. Whoops, what did I get carried away there? Sorry about that. Um, you see the doji, the little gap up. That would have been a good time to start buying. And then we have a, a gap up along the way. Um, Plan and practice. I'll always make a plan and always practice. You know, I, I know there's, you know, there's. I think seven of us, of us on here today, and we're all going to show you something that 
that we think is great, and I, I have no doubt in my mind that it is uh, from each and every one of us. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I think a trader can do is go out there and take something like this and right from the get-go uh, try to knock it out of the park in one day. You have to plan. You have to practice, no matter what you do. So uh, please always, you know, always give, give the chart pattern some time. Give it, you have to work it. There's just no magic silver bullet out there. Um, you know, we, we plan for fishing trips. We plan for building a house. Trading should be no different. We should plan our trades. Uh, plan where to enter. Why do we enter? Plan our target exits. Why? Uh, put a stop in. Why? You know, ask yourself these questions. This is all part of, of, of trading. And the more you plan, uh, the more you become confident. The more you become confident, then it's easier to trade. Hello, Rick. I just uh, wanted to, I hate to interrupt, but you only have about one more minute remaining uh, before we bring our next okay. presenter on. If you want to go ahead and start wrapping things up. All right. We'll, we'll get this done. Um, this is, a, I'll kind of skip a lot of this. This is a trade planner that we use. FYI, we have a webinar tonight uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, on how to use this. This is a trade right here. Uh, it shows you, we talk about how much you risk, your profits. Like I say, I won't go into that too much. Uh, I'm going to finish it up uh, with this right here. If you are interested in the rounded bottom breakout and more about it, uh, we do have a guidebook. Um, it's a complete course on it. If you enter uh, dim, um, promotion code MPD25, you'll receive a 25% discount. If, 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 if you have time, please come to the webinar tonight. Learn about our, uh, our trade planner. Um, I, I, uh, I, I think it would be worth, worthwhile help you set up it. And it doesn't matter what, what type of trade you're doing, the trade planner will help. Really quick, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you again to Investor Inspiration for inviting me. Thank you, everybody, for being here today, taking the time out of your day. I appreciate it. Great. Have a Thanks. great day. Thank you. Great.